gets a little easier seated because the weight bearing the surface Extension. spine muscles start to tighten Extension. up and stabilize the surface seated. spine a little bit more. But if you still don't feel that you can isolate it well, stair casting is no different here than it was when you were supine. Hand contacts are the same way they were. You need, I would say, um, how many people feel comfortable with extension? You'll find that it is, you kind of, more towards your, your thenar eminences. And it's not that you're compressing the spine, it's your, your thenar eminences are pushing along that circle. Circle of trust. that's right. <laughs> Jolly ranches. So in the seated position, for extension on the right, I'm going to tilt the head to the right, some things to look for. You can see them, so can we. If your hands play well together, that nose is right over the midline of the body. If you find it drifts off, it's just your hands are not playing well together. They'll allow them in the cervical spine. They're not isolating the occiput itself. So I'm just going to tilt the head how far? Five degrees. Four to five degrees. Uh, and the easier way to say that, too, is just like you were going to do lateral bending, tilt the head till you feel the first initial pretension, you're right there. From here, I'm going to posteriorly rotate the occiput, the chin will jet forward, and I'll feel that first stop of that bony resistance, that's pretension. And then from there, I'm just going to lightly spring through. And if we do this correctly, that chin will just slightly jet forward. If you feel that the cervical spine is still a little bit too mobile, the same thing holds true over here. It's going to look odd. It's going to, can you have you just stabilize the torso, sir? Just push it. From here, it's the same thing. Look at the head as being... <laughs> Get your face in the camera. What's he grabbing? Think as I have a <laughs> I have a piece of paper over the head. I'm just going to anteriorly translate it forward. You're going to feel the whole circle of the spine is going to give step by step until it just stops. From there, it's going to be relatively easy to isolate by tilting to the side that you want to assess. And then from there, just posteriorly rotating the head and add an eighth inch. Thank you, sir. Actually, you can some step. For flexion, nothing changes. The only difference is, like I said before, it's probably easier now to get your thumbs up on top of the head. So you're going to distract through the base as you rotate through and forward with your thumbs. I'm going to tilt to the side that I want to assess, in this case the right. I'm going to anteriorly rotate the head. You'll feel the chin will retract. And once I feel that pretension, I'm just going to continue the motion by doing virtually just a C, almost like I'm making a C with my hands. Could you do the bitter beer face? We'll call that that way in a seated position. Why not? I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to cup underneath the base of the occiput. I'll tell that way. I need him well. I'm going to take my other hand, pull the frontal bone here. I'm going to laterally tilt to the side that I want to assess. I'm going to traction I to S up through the base with one hand as I traction from S to I through the other to cause that anterior rotation. Take out the slack and once again I'm going to spring. This may basically we're just turning a ball. That's all we're doing. So A, in this case it's going to be A to P and I to S. In this case, it's going to be S to I and a slight degree of A to P as well. Last but not least, we actually have two. It's all just a question of which side you feel more comfortable to. Uh, I probably wouldn't need this for the last one. I probably don't need this. This is easy to get underneath the patient. But this one up over here, if I want to assess the, let's say, flexion of the right, which way do I put the head? To the right. To the right. Now, whether you take an ipsilateral or a contralateral contact, that's all up to you. It doesn't change the way the joint is loaded right now. For the contralateral contact, I'm going to use a thenar eminence up under the base. The easiest way to do this is if I took my thumb, found the mastoid groove, and just followed the mastoid groove up until my thumb came right up into the base, that would be one hand contact on this side. Since this is where I'm stabilizing, my other hand is going to be put cross cord, in essence, on the contralateral forehead. I tilt the head to the right side, the side that I want to assess. And from here, this side's going to traction from A to P and I to S. Is this side traction from S to I and slight A to P as well? I can just traction it this way. <laughs> Guy's got great hands, man. Now, you can do the same thing by taking an lateral contact. Nothing changed. The head's still tilted to the right. I'm going to take that same contact now on this contralateral side. My thumb this time is going to come up the mastoid groove to my thenar eminence comes up from the base. In this case, on the right side, my hand is going to come to the opposite frontal area over here. My head's, hand's going to tilt to the right because I'm assessing the right side. Once again, this hand is coming A to P and I to S, as this hand is coming S to I and A to P. 
It's just a question of which contacts do you feel most comfortable with, which ways help you to isolate the joint the best, which way do you feel the motion the best. That's basically what it comes down to. Questions? Are you ready, sir?